So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ishan Sadashivan, and I'm the founder and CEO of ProSoc Innovators Private Limited. I have Mr. Srishan, who is our, uh, our technical team member. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, both MSRI and Samhita for giving us this opportunity to present over here. And uh, we are a for-profit social enterprise. I'm, I'm clearly stating we are not NGO. We are a for-profit social enterprise. And ProSoc stands for Products for Society. <coughs> we are a product innovation company that is trying to design and develop innovative products to serve the people in bottom of pyramid. So our first product is in education domain, <coughs> where we have developed a school bag that can become a study table for those underprivileged students who sit on floor and study with bad body posture. Our second product is in livelihood domain, where <coughs> It's a compact, low-cost paper carry bag making machine to mass produce paper carry bags as an alternative to polythene carry bags. So this compact machine, this low-cost machine, is going to create numerous employment opportunities to rural women as well as physically challenged people. So these are our two products. Desk kit, the school bag is in education domain. The paper bag making machine is in livelihood domain. But today, <coughs> I am pitching here for a third product, which is in agriculture domain. And this product is being headed by Mr. Srishan. So in agriculture domain, we are trying to build a machine to segregate arecanuts. <coughs> Arecanut is this. Supari, what we call. Yeah, to tell a bit about ProSoc, we started our journey from IIT Kanpur. We got the company incubated in IIT Kanpur Sidbi Incubation Center. We started it in October 2015. So next month, we'll be turning three year old. And for now, we have one, one product in market, desk kit, the school bag, and paper bag machine will be launching in January 2019, three months down the line. The Arakanut machine, <coughs> the R&D has started, and we are seeking now support from MSRA and other eligible partners who can help us develop this product. So this is Arakanut. So it's a commercial crop in India, and, in, and India is the number one producer of Arakanut in the world. India produces 49.5% of world's arecanut. <coughs> so arecanut, from a tree, this is the kind of uh, fruit we get. And once it's harvested, once the processing is done, we get 12 types of arecanut as the box is being circulated. So there are 12 types of arecanut which are produced from a single tree. Now a farmer who is growing arecanut, if he can segregate this into 12 different types, and sell in the market, he can earn more money. Back in old days, what used to happen, <coughs> they used to have manual segregation of these arecanuts into 12 different types. But nowadays, there is huge shortage of labor. They can't get people to work for them. So there is this problem where if they can't segregate it, they can't sell at better price in the market, so they're incurring huge loss. So that's why <coughs> farmers, are not finding this particular commercial crop as an uh, attractive alternative for them to carry their agriculture forward. So here, we are trying to eliminate the problem, uh, problem faced by farmers by designing and developing an image processing based machine which can segregate 12 different types of arecanut for them and make their job easy. And also, the accuracy of the machine is more and uh, it eliminates the shortage of labors. Now I would like to call Srishan, who would like to continue the presentation. Uh, I will explain the, hello? Is it audible? Yeah. I will explain the process of uh, segregation. Uh, we have two cameras, one from the top view and another from the bottom view. We, we need these two because you can see in the in uh, in those types there are actually two surfaces which are 
having uh, two different characteristics that's why we need two cameras and once the image is captured it's uh, sent it to image processing pre-processing unit where we remove the noise and we we, we change the aspect ratio and uh, we convert it to corresponding uh, hs fee part and segment it then we uh, we, we fit into a neural network a, a trained neural network model which classifies the Araka nut into corresponding surface. De depending on the top view and bottom view result, we will come into conclusion the uh, what type of the Araka nut is uh, given. And depending on that, we give the control signal to microcontroller, which will segregate the Araka nut into 12 bins. The 12, Arakan, 12 types of Arakanat are uh, varied from, uh, they changes in their uh, texture from in both views and they are segregated uh, depending on that. The texture, uh, uh, physique and uh, uh, colors are differ from one another so that we can segregate. Uh, for collecting the data, we classified whole 12 types into five different surfaces. In five different surfaces only, depending on the size and the surface text texture, we will get 12 types. <coughs> we collected 700 images for each surface, so that we, we got 3,500 images, and using image augmentation technique, we increased, for each type, we increased up to 2,000 images, that's why we got 10,000 images. Right now, we are using an inception V3 model for retraining. In that, we are getting 75% accuracy. What we need is <coughs> inception V3 is trained for different classifying different objects, like cycle, bike, car, and those different structured object and color. That's why we can't use inception V3 in for any anymore, because it gives less accuracy. That's why we need some uh, AI, so that we, which is trained on segregation of similar objects such as face recognition, uh, uh, iris recognition, those can be retrained so that it, it, will, <coughs> it will give more accuracy. And we need some, like, we need inputs regarding uh, changing the uh, pre-processing stage. We are using only H uh, HSV segmentation technique and some of the open CV techniques to get the reconnets. Uh, cropped to the corresponding aspect ratio. When we started this uh, project, we visited many farmers. We visited more than 70 farmers. And Arakanit is a commercial crop which is in India mainly grown in three states, Karnataka, Kerala, and Assam. So we visited many farmers in Karnataka as well as uh, Guwahati in Assam. And when we interacted with them, wa what we got to know from them was, to solve the problem of labor shortage they are facing today, they are ready to pay up to 4 lakh rupees to buy if a machine was existing like that. So our customer is ready to buy a machine which costs up to 4 lakh rupees. Because Arakanet being a commercial crop, <coughs> they have good returns on this crop. So they don't mind investing this uh, amount, which can help them through the process they anyway have to do. And one more thing is, here, here we are not looking for support from MSRI or support from uh, uh, <coughs> the South, Southern California University, just for building one algorithm for one particular agricultural product over here. We want a general uh, algorithm <coughs> which can be finally customized or advanced as per requirement to suit to different agricultural products across the world and support multiple products or multiple farmers for different dif uh, for different agriculture products. So that's what we are requesting for an overall support, so that we can have a strong technology in place which can be implemented as per the requirement. And we have got a grant of ten lakh rupees for this particular project from Nidhi Praya Scheme of Government of India for developing the mechanical prototype of the machine. So we, we have some budget in place to take care of the mechanical prototyping, but on the <coughs> technology development, when it comes to the coding and the algorithm part, there we need support. And one more thing is, uh, we recently happened to 
get in discussion with the Design Alpha people. Uh, Design Alpha is a company based out of Kochi. Uh, so they support different startups to come up with hardware prototypes or hardware products. So we are in discussions with them on this particular product. So their expertise of more than 30 years is going to help us develop the mechanical part of this particular product. So we are looking for this image processing and neural network support, artificial intelligence support, so that this product can become a reality. Oh, I, I, I meant to ask, like, who, what types of people typically process Eureka Nuts? So would it be like small household farmers or like cooperatives of farmers or larger factories that or that like have middlemen giving them nuts from farmers? And can those processors typically afford machines like this? There are cooperative societies called Mundis where the farmers dump their produce and they're uh, at those once the markets now. Yeah, Mundis are the places where the overall segregation happens. So if this machine will be ready, the ideal target customer will be the Mundi owner. Mm -hmm. Because this person will be able to afford a better uh, speed and better processing capacity machine at a better price point. Mm -hmm. So how many people work at these Mundis doing this work? Yeah, now when, when it's a recurrent processing season, there will be typically 50 to 60 uh, women and uh, men laborers who will be regularly employed. So that duration will be for three to four months in a year. that you have there are the restrictions on who can access them. like uh, could from you know like from Los Angeles can they access them? Yeah, yeah the images we ourselves have taken the images we can give the access to you or else if required we can also take more images so I have just a, a meta comment uh, which is uh, that uh, you know, overall goal that you have of classifying uh, a crop is very good, I think. But taking the example of Erica Nut specifically may not be a good example of AI for social good, because Erica Nut is the uh, primary reason for very high incidence of oral cancer in India. It is the primary reason. But it's mixed with tobacco, then it will cause... No, no, no. So Erica Nut, I'm, I mean, uh, we have people... I, I come from Northeast, very close to Assam. It's a widespread addiction. So with tobacco, the incidence uh, increases by several fold. But even without tobacco, there is enough research to show but that Erica Nut actually causes. So as a dentist, I can give you some perspective, not as a technology person. So uh, yes, Erica Nut is one of the things which ignites or acts as an accelerator in carcinogenic. That's true. So, but that is processed Erica Nut, what you get in pan, you know, katha, supari, what you add. But this is like the wholesale one with the shell intact and all. So it has some medicinal uses also. And if you process this down to that supari form, removing the outer shell, then it is one of the things which can lead to if you constantly chew on you, it causes irritation to the oral mucosa. And from there, you can get those blisters. And look, it can gradually go up to the carcinogen. That's true. Right. But they're talking about wholesale crops here. So that's something which was not, I mean, in a direct conflict, A. And um, no, but who is the user? I mean, what is the user? So, so, uh, so one of the users is definitely the the, the supari industry. That uh, no, I will not challenge that. Obviously, other other uses is also used as, as a pain medication in certain ointments and balms or medicinal uses. So there are wide variety, but that is also one of the uses. One of the uh, industries who buys this. So I'm not going to say that it's not. But yeah, but it is not a direct causative. A tobacco is the number one cause, and this is one of the irritants which definitely leads to fibrous uh, jaw and then oral cancer. Yeah, later stages. areas and uh, municipal schools see supari and that erica nut is also gateway to uh, no for uh, addiction of tobacco so children started no masala supari sweet supari and then they started no like uh, consuming tobacco and etc so whenever you ask questions to the children how you get addiction of uh, tobacco so the number of children says that we started consuming sweet supari and then we start start get addiction of tobacco so if I'm wrong, please correct me. 